grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once upon a time, two brothers, John and Andrew, who lived on neighboring farms, they got upset with each other. It was the first serious rift, first serious argument between them after some 40 years of farming side by side. 40 years of farming side by side, 40 years of sharing equipment and ideas and goods as needed. 40 years of doing that without any kind of a conflict, and then things just fell apart for them. It began with a, just a small misunderstanding, but it grew into a, a major difference and eventually led to a, an explosion of, of bitter words, and that was followed by weeks of silence. Well, in the midst of all that, one morning there was a knock on John's door. And he opened it to find standing there a man who was obviously a carpenter because he had in his hands a carpenter's toolbox. The man said, I'm looking for just a, a few days' work, he said. Perhaps you might have a few small jobs for me to do that I can help you with. Well, yes, John said. As a matter of fact, I do have a job for you. He said, take a look and look across that creek. Look at that farm. That's my neighbor's farm, he said. In fact, it's my younger brother Andrew's farm. And he said, until last week, there was a meadow there between us. But then Andrew took his bulldozer to the river levee and he made a hole in it, and now, he said, now there is this creek between us. Well, John says, Andrew may well have done that to spite me, but he says, I can do him even one better. He said, see that pile of lumber sitting over there? He said, I want you to, to build me a fence. I want you to build me an eight-foot fence. So I not only won't have to look at his place, but so that I won't even have to look at his face. Well, the carpenter said, I, I, I think I understand the situation, and, and I think I can help you. So show me the, the nails and the post hole digger, and I'll, I'll start the work. I'll, I'll do a job, he said, I know that you'll be happy. Well, John had to, to go into town to do a few chores, so he, he helped the carpenter get the materials ready, and, and then John took off for the day. And that carpenter, he worked all day measuring and sawing and nailing. And then about sunset, the carpenter, having just about finished his job, Notice that John had returned. And when John saw what the carpenter had produced, John's eyes literally just opened really wide and his jaw dropped. Because he saw there was, there was no fence there at all. Instead, he saw that there was a, a bridge there. A bridge that stretched from one side of the creek to the other side. It was a really nice bridge, handrails and all, and he saw there was Andrew at the other end of the bridge, and he saw that, that Andrew was starting to walk towards him with his, his hand outstretched. Andrew hollered to John, he said, you're quite a guy to build this bridge after all that I've said and done. And then the two brothers just kind of stood there, looking at each other, at opposite ends of the bridge, and then they started walking towards each other, and then they met in the middle of the bridge, first shook hands with each other, and then they embraced each other. And then they turned, and just as they turned, they, they saw that the carpenter was hoisting his toolbox onto his shoulder, was obviously 
getting ready to leave. And John called out to the carpenter. He said, no, don't, don't leave. He said, stay for just a few days. I've got lots of other projects for you. Well, I'd love to say the carpenter said, but I have a lot more bridges to build. Something there is that just doesn't love a wall, wrote a poet named Robert Frost, that wants it down. For he is our peace, reads today's second lesson, referring to Jesus. For in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Now Robert Frost and the writer of Ephesians, they have wonderful things to say about the elimination of walls, don't they? And, and we wish all those things were true. We, in fact, want them to all be true, and yet the reality is there are old walls all around us, and new walls are being built all the time. Walls that separate and divide people into different groups and in different categories. Walls that you can name just as easily as I can for just the very same reasons that you and I could list together. And the results, the results are almost always the same. The results of those walls, whether they're old walls or new walls, those walls result in, in pain and fear, isolation, loneliness, and divided camps and divided congregations sometimes and divided families. And those results, those realities, they are the very reasons why Robert Frost wrote his words about something not loving a wall and, and wanting it down. Those results, those words, those realities, they are the very reasons why Jesus said and did and prayed the sorts of things that were able to, to break down dividing walls. And those are the reasons why we need, why the world needs those very same things to now be a reality in our own lives. And you and I, you and I know, you and I know why that's so important for those things to happen. You and I, at some point in time, we have felt separation and the alienation. We've lived with the loneliness and with the anger. We've lived with the frustration that's created by those walls of hostility. You and I, we know what it's like to feel cut off from we know what it's like to feel cut off from friends. We may know what it's like to feel cut off from members of our own family. We know what it's like to feel as though we are living in some version of a medieval castle with, with walls so high that it's almost impossible for us to reach out and with walls so high that it's almost impossible for anyone else to reach in. You and I, we, we live with in many ways, we are living with the sadness and the separation that result from the feeling that those walls will never be torn down and they will never be overcome in any way in our lives or in our, in our world. But today, today, Jesus wants something else for us. Today, Jesus wants something better for us. Today, Jesus wants us to hear and to believe that he has as much compassion for us as he did for the multitudes that are described in today's gospel. Today, Jesus wants us to, to hear and to believe that he is still the one who is described in today's second lesson, that, and that he can indeed still do the very thing that's described in Ephesians. And those are the very things that give us hope in the face of all the old walls that are still here, in the face of all the new walls that people are ready to build, it seems, at just the drop of a hat. So we wonder... And so we ask, can anyone really help with all these walls? Can anyone really help with, with all these walls that might exist in our families, that exist in our communities, that exist in our world, that at some time may exist in our own hearts and souls? Yes, says today's second lesson, Jesus can do it. For he has broken down and can break down every dividing wall that anyone can build. Can anyone help with all the distrust that exists in our families and in our communities and in our world and sometimes in our own hearts and minds and souls? 
Yes, says today's second lesson, Jesus can do that. For he is put to death and can put to death even, even the deepest distrust that any person or any event can ever create for anyone. Can anyone possibly redesign the blueprints of, of how we or other people think and feel and act so that the sum and sub substance of our lives can be used to build not walls, but can be used to build bridges, can be used to encourage peace rather than to create conflict? Yes, says today's second lesson, Jesus can even do that, for he is the, the Prince of Peace. He is peace to those who are far off. He is peace to those who are near. He is peace for us on our side of the wall, and he is peace for all those who are on the other side of our own walls. Now we wish, we wish it wasn't true. Oh, how we really wish it wasn't true. But dividing walls of hostility and distrust can still be built anytime, anywhere, for any reason, by any person. And they can still cause unbelievable problems and unbelievable pain. And it can still seem to us as though it's impossible to tear down those walls and replace them with bridges. But Jesus not only can do just that, Jesus promises to do just that. He offers to do just that in us and through us, for us and for our friends, for us and for our families, for us and even for our enemies. So today we ask ourselves, are there dividing walls of any kind, anywhere in our lives, caused by any decision or by any situation, walls that are caused by anything, asks Today's second lesson. If so, then bring them to me, says the Prince of Peace. If so, then bring them to me, says Jesus. Because, says Jesus, I know just what to do with them. And so he does, and so he will. In the words of Scripture, in this bread, in this wine, in our hearts, in our lives, in our world, so Jesus can do just that, and so Jesus will. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing this.